This one is called the pants. Okay, Take we can eight. talk. Yeah. It's posting our pre-show yeah. Facebook yeah. picture, yes. which includes Mr. French and Gabby. The best looking right. guys on the radio. We all so know check the out our Facebook page. We stop taking ourselves too seriously and step out. And you'll boldly, see that, like Mr. Magoo right. blindly stepping onto the next swinging girder and falling. I was going to say we could put it on the script fun. page too. Yeah. yeah. Your hosts, Daryl and Ed, are about to administer a refreshing dose of laughter and love that will inspire Don't worry, you we'll to tell you why I'm wearing this crazy shirt in a minute. The funniest things. Now, here are your hosts, Daryl and Ed. Welcome to Funniest Thing, where each week we share stories about how stepping out boldly always leads to better than expected outcomes. Yes, we do. I'm Daryl. Yes, yes, we do. And I'm Ed. <laughs> <laughs> that shirt you're wearing, it makes you think of uh, the Flintstones on like a Hawaiian vacation. Yes, and we'll explain why I'm wearing this crazy Aloha shirt. And today's show, what's today's Wait, show Wait, I didn't call? even get to the good part. Oh, my bad. <laughs> that uh, we're broadcasting live from middle school studios in downtown Culver City, the heart of Screenland. Yes. Ed just flew in from New York. If you saw our last week's episode, you heard all about his... Oh, yes. Crazy trip. My donut run. His donut run to, all uh, I was going to say Albany, but upstate New York, which yeah. included... I did fly into Albany, so that's Albany. accurate. And Colony. So and he's... Some other weird place, Dwaynesburg or something, where the studio was. <laughs> <laughs> Dwaynesburg? And then Connecticut, Greenwich, Connecticut, to stay with the Biagiotis down there, or the Biagiotis, as my mom calls it, or the Biagiotis, as my aunt calls them. Well, what about the Biagiotis? As, As you call them. Well, you taught me that with the groupies. You don't want to made it up. <laughs> no, but the B O G O D? B O G O D. Oh, that's even better. That's like Will I Am. Look who's in the background. Oh, my goodness. That's oh, we are so excited. We are so excited. What, to, that, we should tell uh, them, we'll tell them who Laura, that is. Laura Harvey. Oh, just, oh you're going to tell them again. Just really hit it hard by well, saying. Well, go ahead. Don't be afraid to unfollow your fear. That's the title of today's show. We can't control which thoughts enter our mind, but we get to decide which ones stay. And when, when, when we dwell on thoughts that make us feel swell, like Daryl's shirt, we know we're aligned with God's will for us. And yes, I even wrote it right there. Yes. During the second segment, former editor of the Daily Word, Laura Harvey, who we love, returns triumphantly to read and discuss today's Daily Word, Transform. That's right. Former editor of the Daily Word is back at Unity Village. That's right. And we were just talking because a friend of yours gave you some good insight as to the way he looks at his own head, because we were talking about which, which choosing, as we always do, <laughs> we were talking about which thoughts we choose to focus on, and uh, when we choose to focus on the thoughts that feel swell, then we, our experience transforms. It gets better and better and better. And yes, because we're cooperating with God. But we often have a voice in our head from conditioning or whatever it is that will be saying, Fearful Other thing. kind of stuff. So what did your buddy tell you? Well, we should also let him know the reason we call this unfollow. Oh, right. right. Is because whether you know it or not, sometimes on Facebook, you get a lot of messages pop up. Yes. That feel kind of yucky. Yes. You know, and if you see them on a regular basis and you don't really want to hurt an acquaintance that you have on Facebook or a friend. Or on you don't Facebook. have to cut the ties like the mafia and never see him again. But there is something you can do. You can press the unfollow uh, yes. button and that way you don't see all those types of messages yes that are other than the that aren't congruent with the things that you like to see and that goes the same thing for our fears of a voice in our head that it's not that the fear is really what is uh, detrimental it's but when we let that fear run the ship yes and you said it so this this kind of okay. really we got to really remember something and this, this now now we're getting somewhere yes this I just happened to hear this guy, I overheard a man, a, guy, a fellow, say this, and it is perfect for our show. Yeah. He was saying, he goes, you know what? I, I, I finally, it finally dawned on me that the, uh, the character from Star Trek, Scotty, lives in my head. You know, and he's the guy who's in the engine room. Yes. And he's always jumping on the intercom and shouting up to the bridge. Yes. And Captain, the engines, they're going to blow. Yes. And he goes, you know what? It finally dawned on me. I, now I turn off the intercom. 
That's right. And it's so good because you could see the we are the, we have the power. You have the power to choose what thoughts you follow. Right. We can't control the thoughts that enter our heads. That's right. But we can control how long. That's right. Whether or not they stay. That's right. Because the captain of the ship, the, in this case, which is us, and which is a, every one of us has a part of us that is has to be the captain of our own ship, is the one who has the final say in which direction the boat is going to go or the ship is going to go. Like the guy in the engine room can be going bonkers. Another guy from the deck can be going bonkers. But the job of every, and every one of us has this, and we don't always realize we do, but the job of the captain is to take a breath, remember that life is always moving in a positive direction, and make an inspired choice as to what direction you want to go. In fact, well, it's so funny. Let me just read this real quick. Okay. I was in your restroom before the show over here at Middle School Studios, and I found this book, Self Meditation, 3,299 Mantras, Tips, Quotes, and Coens for Peace and Serenity by Barbara Ann Kipfer. And I said, I opened it up. And what's in it? And on this page, like, there's some Buddhist koan that says, how do you climb up the blue sky? Right? It's something to think about that when you start to really realize what it means, you start to feel better. And right here it says, drop the head game. Cast out the person in your head who goes on talking and talking, asking questions, judging everything, and calculating everything. Which is exactly yes. what you were just saying. And it, and it can be very compelling when we're used to listening to the oh voice of worry and fear. It makes very good rational arguments as to why it is that voice is afraid. And that's why we have to just remember where the captain and remember that we have the power to say, you know what, as compelling as that sounds, it doesn't feel good. I know it's not right for me. True. And that, like, I mean, I've been using that all week. And uh, one of the, it's like, it's like when we have thoughts, like what, it's like smelling something bad. Yes, and you could chew, and the, yeah, because sometimes just like something, like, you hand someone beautiful flowers, they ah, take a whiff and they yes. go, oh, these are nice, let me put them in a, in a vase. Yeah. But isn't it funny how when you have like dog poo on your shoe, right? you're like, oh my God, it's all sour. Really? Let me, oh yeah, you're right. Wait, oh yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. And you, for some reason, right. you gotta keep yeah, you yeah, taking you keep, a whiff. You keep going back to that smell. You keep going. I keep going back to the situations That's that are right. bothering me, because in the at least in the case of our thoughts, we think that somehow we're obligated to keep going back. Is it still there? Is it still there? Is it fixed yet? And that's just fear, well, and, you yeah. know. And it's uh, well, it's that old belief that if I'm not worrying about yes, this, if yes. I'm not preparing for problems and solving them, right, then I'm not being responsible. Right. But really, that's not what we're here to be doing. That's we're not right. here to be constantly preparing for problems. That's right. And no matter how compelling that voice is, because one time I came over to Daryl's, he said we we're going to have Philly cheesesteaks. And I, it, I, took a, I, I looked at it on the plate. And then, what did I do? I, oh, I went over to the microwave for some reason. I opened up the closet. And there was just some rank smell coming out of that little closet right there. The toaster. The to yeah, so it's something in there where the toaster was. And Daryl says, what do you say? That's just the smell of good provolone. He said, you don't have that out here. Because there's a big running joke between Daryl and my mom and I about um, the East Coast and the West Coast. You don't understand. It's an East Coast thing. You don't understand. It's from the West Coast. But he was trying to convince me that this foul smell <laughs> now mind good. you what's delicious gourmet that's cheese. right half my family's italian i've grown up my whole life eating provolone even when we first moved to california it was like i always say my house was like an italian new york house because we always had stuff from the italian deli and outside it was like california in this case daryl's trying to be very compelling trying to convince me that this rank smell was the smell of gourmet cheese. Of gourmet provolone, no less. Little did he know, folks, it was bought right here at Trader Joe's. That's right. And I really don't think that was what I was smelling, considering the provolone was in the kit in the refrigerator. No, it was in your sandwich. Oh, is that what the smell was? Yes. Wow. <laughs> but we got a great well, three breaths. Since then, I learned that if it smells like provolone, I leave it the heck alone. That's right. Those are our three breaths. And that goes with <laughs> thoughts. If your thoughts smell like provolone, I got a great story in a minute, but let's do these three breaths because I need them. Yeah. You were going to say if your thoughts smell like provolone, leave, leave them alone. the heck alone. Okay, let's take a breath. Ah. Uh, <sighs> if it smells like, like provolone, provolone, I leave, leave it, it the heck alone. Ah. Oh. Uh, 
If it smells like provolone, <laughs> <laughs> I leave it the heck alone. Uh, if, if it, it smells, smells like provolone, provolone I leave it the heck alone. Ah. Uh. Now, I got to tell you, the funniest thing and about the way Daryl's mind works is, is hilarious, man. This guy, we were sitting in the nun's headquarters at Pauline Books of Media prior to this show. And we were talking about this concept of not, you know, say someone rubs you wrong or you've had enough experiences where someone continually rubs you wrong. Like the, the important thing is to just bless them and let them go, not continually chew on the negative. You actually see them in a positive light, see them happy, because wherever they're supposed to be and happy, that's the sure way they're not going to be hanging around you if you, if you don't get along, right? So I said something about a personal experience to Daryl, and Daryl goes, I've got it. Because of what you just said, I got the perfect breaths. And that's how he came up with, if it smells like provolone, I leave it. Because I'm hanging on the edge of my seat. What does Daryl come up with based on what I just said, and in no way, shape, or form could I have imagined it, it was going to be. Well, I, I was dying during the breaths because although that Aloha shirt is going to prove a point here in a minute when we talk about it in the second segment, but it was polyester, so I was starting to sweat under that thing. Oh, like I Like I was see. in a sauna. But should get. I just tell that quick story about thinking the wrong thoughts from Monday in my neighborhood? Sure, yeah. if you're feeling it, go for it. Yeah. The other day I woke up on a Monday and I woke up after having a bunch of dreams that were just, just like everything that upsets me was amplified in this nightmare. Yeah, disturbing. Yeah, like all the little things mm -hmm. that I find normally disturbing and that I try to let go of and yeah. not let bother me right. were in this dream. And if you have a dream like that, that's a good sign. It means that these thoughts are now being processed and the transformation to where you will now accept these conditions right. and not be overwhelmed by them has now begun to transform in yourself and yeah. in on the inside. So that was good. But when you wake up with these thoughts, it's a little bit of a hangover. So I, I just said, I'm just going to do my routine, do the next right thing. And I started on my walk to the hill. And as I got to the end of my block... I see these new neighbors who look like undesirables in my mind. All right. Because they, she had, it was a woman with, a young, young woman with one dog, a uh, pit bull on a leash and another pit bull she's trying to corral. Now, mind you, uh, Gabby's a pit bull, so right. I shouldn't have any problem with this. But in right? this case. But in this case, the provolone, mm -hmm. my fearful thoughts yes. were kicking up. You know, and I started thinking, oh, I bet that that male one isn't even neutered. And now I'm like looking for problems. Yeah. And sure enough, I see, I go, yep, he's not neutered. So now I'm beyond them. She's in the past now and I'm walking along. I'm no longer seeing her. But now the, I'm not unfollowing my fear. And yes. you know how we think in pictures. So now I have this scenario going, I better call Lori and warn her not to walk in this direction. Right. And the other half of me that's saying is going, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. That's preparing for problems. God, just see love where this is. Yes. And I'm like, but I'm beyond that. The gas, the accelerator's going. And this is the thing, the momentum. Yes. That's why you got to stop it, you know, slow this train down. Yeah, because it does. That's a real thing. Our thoughts really do have momentum. So... Because it's really, really easy to beat ourselves up. You know, it sounded so good when Daryl and Ed were talking about it. But, you know, <laughs> trust me, when we're going through it as well, it, it smells like provolone, man. It's not always easy because no. we invested in those thoughts in the past. They really do have momentum. So it does take some doing. Yeah. That's where all of our will goes yes. to realign with God. Yes. And here's the thing. Don't disappoint. Just keep at it. Because yes. even though I would go back to... So now I'm, I'm like imagining this whole movie in my head yeah. where I'm walking Gabby and little Mr. French and this dog comes charging out. Yes. The big one who still has his... He's not neutered. And he comes yeah. right out. And he's like... And I'm in there wrestling the dog heroically. Yeah, and yeah. I like go to pick up a brick. And now I feel guilty. I can't hit this dog. But like... And I'm like, whoa, 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 So this whoa, is whoa. all going on. This is all going dome. on in my yeah. head. And yeah. I'm, and the other, the, the saying, like the captain on the bridge is going, 
um, we could think about what you want, not about what you don't want. Yeah. And the, the guy down in the engine room is going, no, but you don't understand. Yeah. Maybe, no, they're undesirables. And the same voice up here, the captain said, wait, 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 wait. If this was Lori, yes. you know, with Gabby on a leash and another, like even Sonny, the pit bull, the big pit bull you had off leash. Right. Would you think she was irresponsible? Right. And that slowly started stopping and you know, I slowly was able to yeah. unhitch yeah. from that fearful locomotive yeah. that was driving me in a direction I didn't need to go. Right. And then all of a sudden it hits me. Oh, my God. This is perfect for our show, yeah. which is, you know, it's okay to unfollow your fear. Yes. In the past, I would think that I was being reasonable right and these were prudent thoughts right, right, right. and i should let warn lori this is my intuition tell oh my god no yeah. anytime it's fearful and you're making up some crazy movie about right. how you're going to do some heroic yep you know protective type right it's it's the fear getting the better to you and the only thing that really works is love it's so true and god it's a, yeah because it's important to remember at those moments it's easy to start thinking you got to make big decisions how are you going to change this, right? I got to go tell people. I got to warn people. I got to do this. I was in the studio. I told you. I, I was in the studio. I thought I was having fear about because I was about to sing. And my buddy, was the guitar player, he was freaking out over his part. And I was starting to think, who are my real friends? I got to get a team of people who could support me in this. I mean, this is what, like, but it was just feel, it was smelling like rank provolone. It was feeling like work. And the captain had to just step forward and go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Nothing needs to change. No. no one needs to change, you know. And... You know, right at that moment, right when a friend of mine positively posted something, my friend Andy Dreisavard over in Minnesota posted something positive, and I had a little conversation with him on the Facebook, and then my buddy went out to get ice cream, and he's a great guy, but and he was de dealing with the stress of his own guitar parts, so God, like, God just took him out of the picture for a minute. So that I could talk with the engineer, right? And he could cool down. Because, I mean, everything's going really well. But it's natural when you're in the process, like, for his provolone thoughts to start acting right. up, you know? But it was like, by not taking, what do you call it, drastic action oh, at those moments. Because yes. it feels like we have to, but with God, we never really have to take drastic action. Well, one more thing, too. like Because yeah. you hit on it here, and it was my experience as well. We don't now have to... Like, I never told Lori about the neighbor. Yeah. Like, I, by the time I got home, she was actually walking the dog. And, and even a little glimmer of that, the guy right. in the engine room said, sure. you should still let her know about sure. the, those neighbors. Yeah. You know, they're irresponsible pit bull owners. Right. And no, I go, no, no, no. That's not the case. Yes. There's no real evidence of that. Yes. And now I just send love down there and I, I feel nothing. That's fantastic. You know, no, yeah. no fear, no animosity. Right. Nothing but... But love, and that's what transforms the situation. If you're going through something like this with a neighbor or th or whatever, or like Ed, send love. You know, pray for the yeah, situation. Yeah, go with gentle love. and easy on yourself yes. and everyone involved. We're about to go to break. Here's a couple sentences from Science of Mind by Ernest Holmes. Go to DarylNed.com under the reading list if you want to read anything that you heard here today, or go to the show script page. It's all there. It says, if we were to have an active faith, the faith of God instead of a merely a faith in God. Our thought must be centered in universal mind. We are convinced that under divine law, all things are possible. If we only believe and work in conformity with the principles of that law. Now listen to this. Such a faith does not spring full orbed into being, but grows by knowledge and experience. No matter what the outside appearance, including whatever thoughts are yes. in our head, we must cling steadfastly to the knowledge that God is good and God is all underneath, above, and roundabout. Ah, so coming up next, former editor of the Daily Word, Laura Harvey, returns to read and discuss today's Daily Word, Transform. So thank you for listening to Funniest Thing on Unity Online Radio. This one is called The Pants. Well, that was good. Now wait. That was darn good. Do we need any of these for the opener? I was thinking and wondering about the same thing. Let's see. This here. is, no, the love is the good one right here. Yes, that's good. Or do you was, want, uh, but I'm just going to, you look at yours effect, and see think, which ones jump out at you. I don't think cause and effect is as potent, but we'll, I'll include it for our listeners on the website. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, we can do that for some of uh, these other ones as well. Let's see. Yeah. 
Well, which one do you want to do? The victorious um, with the love potion. Let me see. Let me hear the. Let me see the victorious again. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh yeah. You sound hello, much, hello. much yeah. better than us with that great microphone studio setup. Yeah. Yes. It becomes very obvious that love is an understanding. There an you go. An attempt to go look ahead. for the good in all things mm -hmm. and people. All right, great. And we also have. So that's for the third, right? I gotta fix my hair. Wow. Wow. No, it doesn't look good. The lighting in here is terrible. Well, the thing is, we haven't yet advanced to so that our YouTube listener, viewers still only see our mugs. <laughs> well, uh, that's good. Because yeah. it really is a very unflattering position. But well, it is kind of going from the... <laughs> I know. It's what like is terrible. it? Like a little like camera a, on the desk? It's a camera on my laptop. Oh, no. I see. Yeah, Daryl has this little... What do you call that thing that set props right. up the... What is what? See, you, I lift it there up. you go. Much then better. I gotta hold it. Fantastic. Yeah. What uh, <laughs> What are you doing in Unity Village? Yeah. What are you doing in Unity Village? I'm just saying hello. My um, my son lives in Kansas City, so oh, I am just my oldest son. And um, so I'm just visiting him, and so I thought I would come by. I'm I'm staying with Miss Blake from the Unity FM World. You remember Miss Blake? Yes. Mm. Oh and, yeah, uh, Denise. Thank you. Yes. She's the one who gave us our big Blake. Yes. Ah. There. Hey, that's a little bit better. Um, there you go. So, yeah. Well, Denise, yeah, whatever. If, if it wasn't for Denise, Daryl and Ed wouldn't be here. That's so true. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just saying Well, we'd be hi. here, so, but not on hi. Unity Online. Oh, we're so happy to see you. Oh. And I'm happy to see you, too. Okay, Great. Ready? Here, I'll bring it back. Okay, so I'll read this real quick. Yeah, this is awesome. You're listening to Funniest Thing with Daryl and Ed, the best-looking guys on the radio. If you have a question or comment about today's show, or if you'd like to join in the discussion, friend us on Facebook at Funniest Thing with Daryl and Ed, or email us at funniestthing at unityonlineradio.org. Now, back to Funniest Thing. Hey, yo, welcome back to Funniest Thing. Today's show is called Don't Be Afraid to Unfollow Your Fear. Or if it smells like provolone, uh, leave it the heck alone. That little AO I think comes from spending time with the Italians back east. I was surrounded by like 15 Biagiotis in one place, or Biagiotis as my mom calls them. It was amazing. Like real Italian people. <laughs> we were peaches with wine. I never had that before. Did you guys ever have that in your house? Daryl? I'm trying to think. I can't. I must have. I might have. You might have had too many peaches and wine. <laughs> no, I might have had too many wine without the peaches. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. But th this show is perfect because tra for transformation. Because we had we sat down at the nuns and we had like five different readings we were gonna do, and we just went with the flow of inspiration. So the whole tr show has transformed as a result, and I love this because now it's taking on a whole different look than it did before. Yeah, including my shirt. I huh. changed my shirt halfway through the show. Yep, yep, that's true, that's true. So we got a little <laughs> quick reading to do here. Yes, this is from, all our readings are, you can find them on DarylAndEd.com. And at the end of every show we do every week, we include all the readings and even extra readings yes. that we didn't even have time to share on a page that's under... Show scripts. Show scripts. So if yes. you press on there, you'll see all the readings, the YouTube, link to the, the audio, the, the podcast, the joke everything you name it uh, the mail the mail yeah and this one's from the females man's victorious spirit by jack holland <laughs> and it says it becomes very obvious that love is an understanding an attempt to look for the good in all things and peoples an attempt not to look back but to look ahead and at the present an absence of condemnation an absence of negative judgment an absence of negative appraisal of our environment and our circumstances. One should note how one must learn to look at all things in a favorable light. Dude, that is so good because when I remember that, most of my little issues in Ed world is I'm like going back through the provolone of the past. You know what I'm saying? And investing in the past, investing tons of energy into that. As soon as I realize, wait, I don't have to do that at all. That's not what love is doing. Love is just start looking for the positive in the in situations now. Start affirming the good in everyone right now. You're, oh you're my God, up that a good point. Just like, oh, it changes everything. Yes, because that's a very good point. Usually, what happens 
when everything seems to be going wonderful oh my and God, we yeah. feel so good, yes. that's when all of a sudden, like a little old grumpy old grandma in your head, like in my head, will come out and go, yeah, but what about this? And it'll remind me of yes. something from years ago, yeah. almost like, well, don't enjoy this too much. Right. And it's like, no, just delete. When those come up, you could just say, thank you for uh, bringing that to my attention, but God's handled that, Grandma. You know what? Uh, this is really funny because there's a guy that we listen to once in a while. You call him Bakshir, Bashar. Oh, yeah. He said something like, life is like a mirror. Don't expect the mirror to smile back at you and like sit there. When's the mirror going to smile back? We have to smile. Yes. Keep smiling. And sometimes Grandma or whoever's face will still pop up. But we got to keep smiling at the mirror until the mirror smiles back at yes. us. And it does not take that long. And speaking of smiling back, yes. this is usually the time where we thank all of our listeners we appreciate you listening, and, yes. we know, and we know how much uh, you share about our show because our listenership keeps increasing. We we actually now have over uh, fans from over 31 countries on our Facebook page. Dude, there's 171 countries listening right now. During the live broadcast. Wow, Jeff Cooper was hiding that under a bushel. I know. We had to pry it out. We had to pry it out. We found it out. 171 countries listening live. Give me a break. And we brought this up last week. A listener came up with a great idea for her there. Friend, if you really like our show and you want to share it as a little gift with a friend, you know, because not everybody knows how to Uh get to the iTunes or anything. So they burned a CD with one of their favorite shows and gave it to a friend as a gift to listen to in their car, and now they're addicted to it, and we're if grateful for that. If you like an episode and you think it's sexy, burn it to a disc and let your friend know. Woo! Uh, let's see. Okay, <laughs> now, speaking of sound. Hot dog. It's time that really the guy who makes this all sound great, everyone at Unity Online He's Radio. He's a mixture of Rock Hudson, uh, Kevin Kennedy and Kevin Cosner. Oh, and Jack Benny, all in one. Jack Black, Benny oh. Hill. Oh, that's the man. That's that's Jeff Comfort, <laughs> our audio file. Because <laughs> each week he takes us right, right into the comfort zone. Yeah. yeah. Boom. And now it's time to take a shout out for the prayer. Oh line. yeah, prayer line. Yes. Oh, yes, he yes. was excited. Yeah, yeah. Because well, I didn't we- want to forget the next thing we needed to mention. Oh, that's right. Down there. That's so why. we want to give a shout out to the prayer line. Ed and I, we actually a listener once said to me yes. or messaged us, I forget what it was, said, oh God, you guys have to do a lot of uh, endorsements. And yeah. we were like, no, the, we, do, we decided to do these because we actually use all these things we endorse yes. and they ha- they're they so helpful to us personally right. that we just want to make sure our listeners know they're available and that it's a little apprehensive trying this stuff for the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of those is the prayer line. That's right, because there is a line in unity. <laughs> it's called the prayer line. line. It's brought so much joy to many a man or woman who called... 800 now pray yes yeah. and a friend of mine uh who was going through some trouble never listened to our show and he just was going on and on and on about all this frustration in his life and i said look call this prayer line i said it works what's the matter with you i said call the prayer line i know you're going to be reluctant to do it i'm reluctant to do it but i guarantee you you just call i swear to god he called me like two hours later and he goes Wow, I called that prayer line. I, I wasn't really expecting that. I didn't know I'd be talking to someone personally yeah. because he heard the message first. Which yeah. kind of that. And he said, I feel so much better afterwards. Oh and he God. was a first time. I want to call him right now. That's 800 now pray, 800 669 7729. And you can get the free app at the App Store, which is the letter U, the word pray. Oh, and you can good. text in your prayers. And I just want to bring this, this is the perfect opportunity to say a prayer for someone that I had just met. Yes. I was at our favorite coffee shop, and there was a lady there who I could tell was going through um, chemotherapy yes. or had alopecia because she was totally bald, like losing her hair. But that's not really what drew my attention to her. That's that, right. That's what I realized, but she was so 
full of love. Like I could feel, you know, some people just have that yes. joy. Oh yeah. And it was so magnetic and felt so good. And her voice was pleasant. She was jolly with everybody when she was getting her water. And part of me goes, well, I hope I get to tell her that. Cause you know, we're afraid to share, Sure. but I go, God will make it possible. Sure enough. She ended up standing right next to me by the coffee, uh, half and half. And I said, Oh, and I told her how much I thought she was so jolly and yeah. nice little pleasantries. And then she left. Well, through a series of coincidences, I ended up going to Costco. I had no real plans to go to Costco. It was just one of those following hunches. Yes. And I had a shirt to return and I go there and there's no line. So I go, Oh, this is why I had the hunch. That's not why I had the hunch. That no. might've been one reason, but it wasn't the big reason. The big reason was, I said, oh, that went quick. I'll go use the restroom while I'm here. And I head to the restroom. And who, like practically, we both almost bumped into each other, right. was that same woman. Amazing. And I was like, oh, my God, I get to see you again. And she goes, yeah. And she started talking about how her, you know, she's going through this, uh, you know, um, breast cancer treatment. Yeah. And she owns this pizza parlor that we know. And then she's a neighborhood person. And right. it's the coop. And it's on National Boulevard in Los Angeles. And I was like, me and my friend have always wanted to go there and so never true. had the chance. And then she's just talking to me. And, I, and by the end of the conversation, I said, you know, you have such a wonderful, positive personality. I could tell that you're just spontaneously healing right now. Wow. So I had forgotten her name. And then today I wanted to mention her on the show. So I went out of my, you know, my normal, like, no, yeah, I better yeah, just, yeah. well, just mumble it. No, I called the restaurant. Yeah. I asked if this is the owner, and it was, and I knew that was her husband because yeah. he's working there alone without her help. And and I said, I explained, we do this show. She must have thought I was crazy. I said, we do this show. I met your wife. She's so positive. And we talk about prayer and stuff on the show. And I just want to share with our listeners what she's going through so we could send out a nice prayer of healing and health and because she's just so positive, can you please let me know her name? And his name's Mike, and her name's Christina. Yes. And I just want to let all our listeners just think of Christina when you think of her as bright and whole and healed, because she is so wonderful. And I've only met her that one time, that she has so much to share with everybody, and she brings so much light to even strangers. Yeah, you know that she really is an angel here among us. So yeah. I just wanted to put that out there. Yeah, and send the love to Mike and the Coop yes. Pizza and their business and everyone that comes in there. Yes. Yeah, yeah, for the highest good, right there. Ah. Oh. All right. So next we come to the daily words segment, and our friend Stephanie Havelka, oh uh, who's God. been on the show, who's a fan of the show, texted us to let us know how much she loves the Daily Word, yes. right? Yes, yeah. Her exact words were, I love this Daily Reader, the yeah. Daily Word. Yeah. And she shot us a picture of today's reading. Yeah, you'll and put it's, it in the script. Yeah, it's all marked up and underlined. Yeah. And then I responded, I go, yeah, today was a great one because it. Ba I like the fact that it says, all we have to do is enjoy the belief that God's doing the transforming. Yeah. So on that note, let's bring in former editor of The Daily Word, Laura Harvey. Hello, hello. Hi. I'm happy to be with you guys today. And you're She's live back. from Unity Village, correct? I am. I haven't been in the studio in like a year or two or something. So Man. it's great. Dude, we're so excited. And we got speaking of Unity Village, we have that little news item in the third segment about something that happened. Oh, yes. Yeah, something you're going to want to hear what we will oh, have. It's amazing. It's amazing. Oh, yeah? Unity Village in the news. We're yeah. going to share that in the third segment. In the segment. news and in the nude. <laughs> well, also, we're lucky you're hot with us on this word because we got a real life transformer. That's right. <laughs> I'm what? working on it. I'm, I'm this is my master's degree. <laughs> there you go. That's correct. That is accurate. Aren't we all? That is accurate. I know. I know. <laughs> So yeah, it's been a couple of years of major transformation, so Fantastic. it's good. It's all good. Yes, it is. All right, so shall we get the Daily Word here? Sure, I'll read the Daily Word. Let's dedicate it to Christina. I would love to hear that. I love that story about Christina. So to Mike and Christina, let's um, have this Daily Word be transformed. Wednesday, July 29th, I am transformed in mind, body, and spirit. I have faith in the power of God to transform my life. 
When I perceive lack, I tap into spirit's dynamic healing energy. Every condition of my life changes for the better as I reconnect with my spiritual source. I look into my heart to see what I can shift to better align with God. Perhaps I want to turn sadness into joy or sluggishness into action. Maybe I need to let go of the need to control a situation. I affirm I trust God's power to renew and change my life. I am transformed in mind, body, and spirit. Repeating the statement many times leads me to change the way I think. New and better conditions bring me peace, healing, and joy. I am grateful for the power of God. From Romans 12, 12, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Ah, oh, that is nice. That's a good one. You know, this, real, this, this reading like sums up what I learned from that one week in doing music again and going back to mix the CD that we started. It's like the God is what kicked off everything. God is what connected me with Kurt out here in California in some random way. And God is what basically through us wrote all these songs. And the moment I start to worry about whether it's money or worry whether it's about... Um, who's going to agree with who on the project or anytime I take it away from the fact that God sparked the idea, God's going to follow through and complete it. It's like I lose track and I lose the inspiration and I start acting off of self-will and it's, none of it came out of self-will. I mean, the, what came from aligning my, my, my will with the will of the creator and it just, boom, it just happens that way. When we surrender. Yeah. So when I sat on the sofa, what I described earlier, I realized I just did the simplest thing. I just reconnected with the source that brought me there in the first place. And then from there, it just was easy. Well, and you guys are geniuses with this unfollow, you know, your fear. Because that, when you can't find your way to alignment, you know, that's the first step to take. To unfollow from the negativity. To unfollow from the, you know, the fear or the, the, um, the thoughts that are going in your head or the self-judgment or the unworthiness or any of that. Yeah, you know, and then you the space opens up after that. Yes. You know? right. Yeah, and I like this daily word because that one line, like once I unfollow my fear, I just I use the will I have to choose to believe, you know, that God's power is doing the renewing, like God's. God's doing the transforming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that immediately starts to elevate my attitude and elevate my mood. You know, yeah. to trust that God is... I don't have to figure out how this is going to come about. I just have to know and believe, choose to believe that it will. And it will always be better than expected. Yeah. Right. And then we just, go yeah. ahead. Well, the love in the universe is there, so we're just tapping in, you know. Yeah. That, that love in the universe is supporting all these, these things, these changes that we go through. Yeah. You know, and um, I mean, it talks about, I want to change my life. Well, change isn't easy. You know, change doesn't always look pretty. It doesn't, you know, it scares you to death, you know. But you, um, that love of the universe is always underlying it. So, you know, when you can get past that fear, acknowledge it, you know, hey, that's part of being human is to fear. Right. And even have the negativity. That's not bad. It's really just part of humanity. Right. You know, but yeah. to, to set it aside to um, see what else is beyond that, you know, it's yeah. powerful. That's, yeah. what, that, that's what makes it me. I get the image of us being like children, truly like children of God or children like Jesus talked about becoming like children because when we know that like our our father and mother and father is behind us, then like a like a happy kid, we go out, we play, we explore, we try new things, you know. Yeah. When I forget that, I'm, I curl up in a ball or I must try to muscle my way and forgetting all along that like really there is, you know, like there's a great Catherine Ponder that says, I am the rich child of a loving father and I dare to prosper now. You know, that, that kind of reminding myself of that. That's one of my, uh, I, I love these ponder affirmations. And that, that one, I, I just tell myself that again and again when I need to. Yeah, I don't have to be the father. That's right. Yeah, that's right. It's not all on you. No, that's it's right. such a relief. You know? Yeah, exactly. Because that gets scary. That's what we were saying. When we do uh, daily and 
throughout the day visit with our real father, which is God, then people start to view us as the father sometimes because we're reflecting that. You know, we're in alignment with that. You know, and the only way I've found to, to have those experiences by re, like doing our morning routine throughout the day, sitting and just reflecting. I have to remember, and the more I just keep remembering that God is there somehow, like you said, God does it all. People start coming to me and thanking me. And I'm all, all I'm doing is just remembering that God is, remember we said, uh, yeah. relax in your bunk or whatever, because God is on, the captain it's is on, on the, the bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's also like we, ha- like I make sure my physical body has three meals or more yeah. a day. But when it comes to feeding our spiritual body, we seem to not, we, it goes malnourished. Yeah. And th- but once you get in the habit, you can't do without it. Like so I am true. in such the habit now of connecting when I first get up and then connecting on my walk yeah. and then connecting throughout my day. And then anytime like something, spon- you know, serendipitously happens, I'm like, oh my God, you know, funniest thing. Like, you start getting in the habit of looking for God and everything. Yep. And then yep. you, you begin to experience it more and more. So when your mind like mine or Ed's or anyone is listening, moves in the wrong direction, it, it doesn't have the power that it once had to like take me down with yeah. it. You guys are so good about reminding everybody about that. The practice of, you know, and the ritual or the, just the habit, the routine of remembering to get connected all throughout the day. Yeah. And then, you know, you will turn around and find yourself that you've forgotten all. Yes. <laughs> yeah. oh Even God, the best yeah. of it. <laughs> we all do yeah. it, you know. The good I've part, forgotten. the best part is like the whole experiment really is in our own life because instead of me thinking I got to convince anyone else around me, it's like, if I take the time to say like this, we just got this Catherine Ponder affirmation in there. It says, I trust the universal spirit of prosperity to provide abundance for us here and now. God gives the increase. And if we do that, like you did in that situation with that woman where you said, God will make it easy for me to meet her. And where I said, you know, dude, all the pressure's off. I don't have to convince anyone else. Because, and then when it works, it feels so amazing because it's just me reminding myself and then brrr, it all it all happens. Yeah, let it be easy. If you're struggling with anything at home, even before you go to bed, if you're thinking of something, a problem, a nice thing to do is to surrender it to God before you go to bed yeah. with the belief that th- this can be easy. This can be resolved. Yes. And somehow that just sets it off. Some people say it drops it into the subconscious so it can get to work on. Whatever it is, it really is effective. Yeah. And it really will. You'll come up with the most perfect solution yeah. at the most unbelievable, with the most unbelievable timing or can, circumstances will start happening in the yeah. next few days where you're bumping into just the right person at just the right time. It really is worth... Falling into place. Yeah, it really is worth yeah. giving that a try. All right. Laura Harvey, thank you for coming on today. We always Thanks love to talk to you. for having me. I always oh love God. being here. Our fans love you. you. And uh, we do too. So coming up after the break, we have a joke of the day, listener mailbag, which is chock full. I saw the mailman coming up. So thank you for listening. The funniest thing on Unity Online Radio. This one is called... Does Laura Harvey know that we're on YouTube now? I have heard. I've heard that rumor. Yes, yes, yeah. I do know you have that, uh, that on YouTube. Yeah. A lot of people watching? Yes. That's yes. great. I yes. bet they love seeing you. Well, some people it's actually... Fun. Some people prefer the video to the, yes, to the podcast. Yeah, that's why I come in here and make Jeff stay and make me, let me come into the studio so I can see you and get my laptop all hooked up for Aww. me. Isn't he sweet? He's so sweet. <laughs> he <laughs> tricked me the other day. He texted me. He said, I got a question for you. And somehow he found these dots that he makes it look like he's typing. And I'm keep saying, so it looks like it, he's oh. typing a really long question. I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> oh, God, he has a question for me. And I even told my wife, I said, this is the longest question, wow, man. Like, I, like, what's thinking about this, huh? Yeah, because I'm looking at it. Because I was coming home from the airport. I had just gotten back from New York. I'm looking, looking, looking. And then finally, like an hour later, or two hours, I don't know when it was, I finally texted him. I said, man, you're killing me. And then he said, gotcha. Because the whole <laughs> time dying. it was just some little icon he had dropped in the text message that made it look like someone was typing, man. That was a good one. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> He's always got something. I know. Thank God, man. Hey, I'll sign off, let you guys do your part. All right, we'll see you you later. Yeah.
Bye bye. Bye. It was brilliant. It was genius. That was genius. I gotta say, you got me so good. Oh yeah, we gotta bring up the the Yagozi Mastermind Cruise. Ooh, oh yeah, thank you. You were gonna me. say Master Cleanse. Well, it is like a Master Cleanse. That's right. Don't be afraid to unfollow your fear. Your true colors. Remember we sung that? We turned a negative into a positive? Your when? true colors come shine. Let your true colors shine through. Because first it was a negative. Oh, and when the person said it to me. Yeah, yeah but then oh, I man. turned it into a positive. With the... the best part was I thought it was a positive because I was so high. And it <laughs> took a week of me going, wait, when she said my true colors are coming out, that wasn't a compliment. <laughs> wait, and when it means high, it means high on life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spirit, uh, high, like the way I feel when we do this show. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to come We're going to do it all, dude. Come on. Okay. We're going to rip it. We're ready when We're Jeff is. It. Flip it. Rub it down. Oh, no. Let's see. Are we going to do any of these? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Oh. Are you going to do the first one? Okay. We now return to the funniest thing. Here Don't are your hosts, Daryl and Ed, the they best that. looking guys on the radio. All hey. right, welcome back. Go ahead. Do we have the funniest thing? Today's show is called Don't Be Afraid to Unfollow Your Fear. And the first thing we like to start, I, we like to start the third segment with something positive. And this one comes from Joel Osteen. Yeah, but you sounded like Michael Jackson. I know. <laughs> he's a, he's, that Joel Osteen is a tricky one to imitate because he goes between like an Elvis, a Michael Jackson, yes. someone from the Deep South. But he does have a lot of positive things to say. He does. And that's something we want to make sure, like, never discount anywhere you find oh, anything yeah. that lifts your spirit god loves to give it to you from the most unexpected places yeah keep an open mind yeah and you'll find whatever you need from the most unlikely sources That's right and this one came from joel Stein. It's very positive it says begin today to think the way god thinks the bible says the path of the righteous grows brighter and brighter and brighter think increase think big think expansive Start expecting the unexpected and look at life through your eyes of faith. When you do, God will show up and begin to work things out in your favor. Take a step toward victory in your life today. And what's that pamphlet called? This is actually a, a pamphlet, a free pamphlet, uh, and it's called 30 Thoughts for Victorious Living. All right. Here's a quick one from Science of Mind 365 by Ernest Holmes. It's a daily reader, and he says, this is an affirmative prayer. My whole consciousness is alive and awake and aware. Today, then, I expect new ways of doing things. I expect to meet new people, form new friendships. I expect everything in my experience to enlarge and deepen and broaden. I expect more good than I have ever experienced before. And today, I expect to give out more, to increase my love for others. Today, I expect from myself a more gentle approach to life, a more kindly feeling, a more beneficent Beneficent impulse, new thoughts, new ideas, new people, new situations, new ways of doing things, and a new influx of the divine will will make this day perfect, glad, and expressive of limitless bounty from the storehouse of infinite good. Now, did you see what it said in there? Be motivated by a divine impulse, yeah. a loving impulse. You follow through with it. Yeah. The other day, I was up on the hill having a good time. Okay. And I jogged past these two young girls. Oh, yeah. And I jogged right by them, right as the one girl lifted up her arm on the path to take a selfie of yes. the two of them. And I thought to myself, darn, I wish I was a little slower yep. and got in that picture. And then God gave me the, imp the benevolent impulse and said, you should tell them that. And, I, and then you got to let go of the fearful voice that says, no, no, no. Yeah. Sure enough, I had the opportunity. I said, darn, I wished I went slower. I would have gotten you. I wanted to be in your selfie. And she goes, do you want to be in our, our selfie now? And I was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the three of us took a selfie. And I remember as soon as that ended, we had a little chit chat. And I went off my own way. And I go, thank you, God. This is the life I always wanted. Yeah. You know, that wherever I go, I could step beyond my fear yes. to express love. You know, instead of frustrating and going, I shouldn't say anything. Because it always leads to better than expected outcomes. Yeah, so 
Recently. I'll post that picture on our oh, it's script a really page. Good one. You'll want to see it. After digging to a depth of 10 feet last year. Oh, is this year, news? This is news. Oh, no joke. We got news today. New York scientists found traces of copper wire dating back 100 years and concluded that their ancestors already had a telephone network more than 100 years ago. Wow. Not to be outdone by New Yorkers, in the weeks that followed, a Californian archaeologist dug to the depth of 20 feet, and shortly after, a story in the LA Times read... California archaeologists report finding 200-year-old copper wire and have concluded that their ancestors already had an advanced high-tech communications network 100 years earlier than the New Yorkers. And one week later, a, new, a local newspaper in Missouri reported the following. After digging as deep as 30 feet behind his dorm room at Unity Village, Jeff Comfort, a self-taught archaeologist, reported he found absolutely nothing. Comfort has therefore concluded that 300 years ago, Unity Village had already gone wireless. Oh, he's not even giving us a boom. Ah, oh, man, unworthy. unworthy. <laughs> what We're not worthy. Well, what do we... Oh. All right, who is that I hear in the distance? Anyone? Gabby the Postal Pitbull. All right. <laughs> Wait, she's wearing a lei and some sort of Hawaiian shirt. Uh, oh, my Ed. God. All Wait, right. she's got a little... Wait, there's some sort of flyer here first. What's oh, this? Oh God, yeah! You gotta tell them, tell the people. Oh my goodness! Come on, lay it on them quick. We got. Let's get a couple pieces of mails out. This is the Ugozi yes. Mastermind Cruise. Yes. I'll post the link. I'm gonna be the guest speaker on that. Yeah, Larry Broughton's putting the whole thing together from uh, Broughton Hospitality, Broughton Hotels. Yeah, you and you know what? This cruise is a positive career move. That's right. Because it's gonna, it's it's gonna, you're gonna have the opportunity to meet with a lot of. Uh, Inspiring Barry entrepreneurial yes. minded people. That's right. In a very relaxed, um, you know, yes. uh, relaxed uh, environment. That's so you right. get to t you'll get to pick some of these leaders' brains without them picking your pockets. That's right. Because it's actually basically for the price of a three day cruise from Los Angeles to Ensenada and back. You're getting all these extra added benefits. Yeah. You know how to start a mastermind, joining in a mastermind, understanding how you know we how we can have access to even you know higher ideas than just the ones that we think are in our head. Right, right. It's like this show, our show on a boat. Daryl will be the featured speaker. So on our on the script page this week and on our website DarylNed.com, you'll find a link there. You have to add, you have to register by August seventh, right? That's so, right. So we got a week left. So you got about a week left. So there is that. And it is awesome. It's only six ninety five, and it includes right. everything. And we are very excited about Three -day that. Three-day cruise. Daryl will be there to with hang an, out. Yeah, with an Aloha shirt. That's right. So let's take a piece of mail now. Why don't you read the first one? This is from Jorge de Rojas from Ho Ho Halloween. Yeah. And he says, hi, guys. First off, thank you for all the times you've lifted me from the doldrums. But today was special. I am healing in faith from some medical and physical challenges for the past several years after a serious accident. While listening to your episode, Get Off the Mat, I was reviewing my emails. Among them was one sent by a friend for a job opportunity that sounds like something which I can meet the challenge. With you in the background and your joyful jibber-jabber, I decided to take the leap and put myself out there and in with a positive and healthy resume to send. While doing so, I was surprised at how much I have managed to accomplish even with my present health challenges. Mm. I saw the positive and put that forward in my resume. I know that whatever may come will be what is best or something better for me. Jorge, thank you so much, Jorge. And he's from Florida. We got a good one from Chris Schwann. Go to our website and con there's a contact form and that's where we get a lot of our mail from. It says, to the laugh out loud, funny and uplifting Daryl and Ed. I must say, then you have another listener who is now officially hooked on your show. Yet, as always with God, the synchronicities are as are a testament to his magnificence. Christina Rabom and I have, or Rabom, or 
Robom, Ro- 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 and I have been friends for over a year now, and she shared with me about your radio show months ago. And last week, I listened to it, and there you are talking about her. And your guest, Larry Broughton, was also talking about her. I love that you embrace all the people that show up in your lives and your shows. Just letting you know that you are doing amazing things with your messages, your show, and your personalities, and your humor. Never, ever stop what you are doing. You inspire and uplift. You remind us how to live a full and fun life with God. Here's to your continued genius. To the laugh out loud, funny and uplifting Daryl and Ed. And that's from Love and Light from Chris Schwann. And it was a coincidence that her friend was on the show she just happened to listen to. That's right. We should thank uh, Kathy Quinn who wrote to us and said that by listening to our show, worry is nothing to worry about. Now whenever she has a negative thought, she, has, she follows it with a, a blessing and releases it to God. And she can now stop worrying about whether or not she will completely be in healed, healed in time to go back to work. And, you know, and I all got the good things news. That, yeah. She's already back at work. So it works. <laughs> and then Sandy Page, we want to thank you because you wrote to us about how you showed up at work on a day you didn't really feel like being there. And you blessed an elderly couple. And it says, I have, I have you guys to remind me of these simple ideas that help so much. Love you both. Sandy Page from Chicago. Illinois. So we will put those full letters on the yes. website so you can read them in their entirety because they're very inspiring. Right. And this this whole thing kind of brings me right back to a simple song from an old show that I know you, show. you and Eric Fazaro well, used this was, to... Well, this was the original Funniest Thing theme song. That's right. I remember you and your brother used to lay down in, in your underoos and watch it and listen and we sing didn't this have song. A, well, we didn't have underoos back I then. I think about what's right. I never think what's wrong. I'm the funniest thing to do be a doobie all day long. What is that? How does this thing even go? Do be a sidewalk prayer. Do be a sidewalk prayer. <laughs> Don't be a stingy prayer. Don't be a stingy prayer. Do be a plate cleaner. Do be a plate cleaner. Don't be a food fussy. Don't be a food fussy. I think about what's right. I don't think about what's wrong. <laughs> I'm, I'm the funniest thing, thing to be. I do be all day long. Visit DarylAndEd.com to find easy links to everything we do, including the Funniest Thing podcast on iTunes, Kurt our YouTube page, our Twitter feed at Daryl and Ed, and the Funniest Thing Jeff fan Cumber. page on Facebook. Like it and be a part of the party. You go see Cruz. That's right. And always thank you for being a part of Funniest Thing with Daryl and Ed on Unity Online Radio. Because I'm the funniest thing to be a doobie all day long. Yeah. Oh, my rim shot didn't work.